Hey everyone, it's Ollie. Uh, welcome to the next tutorial in the general Java game development series. Uh, I'm excited to bring this tutorial to you today because it's going to be about how to build an input manager class. And we're going to build it in a way that uh, sort of the whole thing of your user inputting, uh, you can store statistics about it. And I mean stuff like the amount of times they've pressed it and the amount of times they've released it and stuff like that uh, and also it's going to give you a much easier way to add input to your to the states that we built last time uh, right here it's going to make it so much easier to handle uh, input on those states because you'll be able to, you won't need to sort of implement key listener and then all your input code won't need to be in the key pressed key released method uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is make a class called input manager and also a class called key. Um, we're going to build the key class first and what the key class is going to do is it's going to store the value of a key code such as uh, up, down, left or right, WASD, whatever and it's also going to have a string which is the name of the uh, the, which will be the name of the input. So we can write straight away the constructor public key and as a parameter it's going to take a key event oh no sorry it's not, it's going to take an int called key code and it's also going to take a string uh, we'll do the string before the key code actually string called uh, name and then we'll make those two variables up here we'll say um, actually public string name public int key code and then we say this dot name equals name this dot key code equals key code and now we've done that uh, we can add some more methods in a actually let's do it now um, also make a boolean value public boolean uh, pressed. This is if the key is pressed. And initially, we'll set pressed to uh, false because it won't be pressed the second that the thing starts. Um, and what we're going to need for the key is we're going to need a method called toggle, and that's going to turn the pressed boolean to true and false, and it's going to allow us to uh, get whether the key is pressed in or not. So uh, public void toggle and it's going to take a boolean value toggle and that's true or false and we say um, oh sorry <clears throat> we're gonna say if pressed is not equal to toggle then we're gonna say pressed equals toggle so in other words if we press when this is initially false so when we press the key in uh, we're gonna set toggle to true so false is not equal to true so it will set pressed equal to true and then we come down here and we can say if the thing is pressed we can say um, I forgot to add an integer up here called uh, let's call it presses well that's too close to pressed number of presses still don't like that press count that's good enough uh, so press count count plus plus so we add on to that so again when we call when we call this toggle method uh, if the key is being pressed we'll pass in true and if it's being released we'll pass in false and that's gonna toggle press to true and false and if the thing is pressed uh, we're gonna add one to the amount of times it's been pressed and that's useful for um, if your character had like a special move and they're only allowed to use it 10 times or whatever you'd say if press count is greater than 10 then they can no longer use it uh, that's just an example so what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the input manager class and with the first thing we're going to do is implement implement there we go uh, key listener so we implement key listener and this is going to be the main key listener for our states and we can import key listener and then we can implement all abstract methods 
and you can remove those comments. I'm going to shift key typed down to the bottom because I rarely ever need to use key typed but you might need to so we'll just keep it down there and also you have to keep it down there because uh, you need to implement all the abstract methods. Um, so basically what the first thing we're going to need is we'll make the constructor public input manager and the first thing we need to take as a parameter is a canvas C and that canvas is going to be the actual state itself because state extends canvas so it technically uh, is one so canvas C and we can import that and we will say C dot add key listener add key listener and this is the parameter because uh, this class is a key listener and um, after we have done that uh, is we're going to need an array list of keys that is going to be stored in the input manager and we're going to be able to add to this array list of keys to add effectively add more inputs for our user and the way we're going to implement um, sort of detecting what keys are pressed is we're gonna be calling input manager and then we're gonna say uh, input manager and then we'll make a method called something like is pressed and then we give it a string parameter and then it's gonna look up this string name here if we gave it that initially and uh, it's gonna so if input manager dot is pressed and then we say say we map uh, the up key if we type in the word up it's gonna detect this key and then that will effectively say if up is pressed and then you can give it your handling code so that's what we're gonna do now we'll make a public array list and then we give it key as its type and then we can import array list and then we'll call it keys equals new array list of keys and we can leave it empty right now and what we're gonna do now is make methods for this we're gonna say public void add mapping for add a key mapping and then we're gonna give it a, a key code and we're also gonna give it a name so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say string s key or no not key code int key code and simply here we say keys dot add and then we can say new key and then we can give it s and key code as a parameter so now that we've added um, now that we can add mappings to our input manager uh, we're going to want to handle them in the key press somehow and the way we would handle it is in key pressed we're going to toggle the button to true and in key released we're going to toggle the button to false so right here we need a for loop um, we're gonna say for int i equals zero i is less than keys dot size i plus plus and we're gonna say um, if actually uh, yeah we're gonna say if key code if e dot get key code is equal to keys dot get i dot key code so if the event if the person because remember key pressed uh, takes has a key event as a parameter and that's whatever button the user presses so we're gonna we're literally constantly looping through all the keys that we have mapped as inputs and we're gonna say if the key code that the user presses equals one of the keys uh, dot key we say keys which is the array list get the one at i and dot key code so basically if the user is pressing one of our mappings then we can say keys dot get i dot toggle to true because they're pressing it and we can literally copy this over to key released and all we need to say for that is change true to false so what that does is it toggles the keys that are being pressed on and off depending whether you're pressing them or releasing them and also uh, adding mapping whoops uh, so now the last method we need from our input manager is to check if a key is being pressed and this is how we're going to handle our key events and again the reason we've done this whole thing is because 
Uh, sometimes we don't want to handle events just in key pressed, key release methods, so we could possibly handle them inside uh, such as the update method down here uh, for the menu state, which is just our example state. It basically just makes everything lots easier. So the final method we need is public uh, boolean returns a true or false value um, is pressed. Oops is pressed and we give it a string s and what we do here is we loop through actually we can paste what we just had we can loop through all of the uh, keys in the array list and we can say um, first thing we need to do is check if the string the user entered is equal to any of the keys that are actually existent so if uh, s dot equals keys dot get the one at i dot name so if we find a key that's a match with the name we then need to check if that key is pressed so we can do another if statement saying uh, if that keys dot get i dot is pressed uh, actually we don't even need to do that we can just return that value so we return, so let me explain this again, uh, and outside the for loop we can just return false, because in that case they wouldn't have found it at all. So what we're doing here, the for loop, is looping through every key mapping that we have in the array list. We then check if the string that the user entered is equal to a mapping that we have, and if it is, we can return that mapping as pressed uh, boolean which will be either true or false depending on whether it's pressed or not and then if the name they entered doesn't exist it will loop it will come out the for loop and then it will say return false so now that we finally built all of this what we're going to do is if we go to state we can make a new global variable called public input manager we'll call it input manager like that and in our in the state constructor we can say input manager equals new input manager and give it this as a parameter and then once we've done that because we extend because we extend state in our where is it menu state this is just an example we now have input manager as a as a um global variable for that so what I'm going to do is we're going to demonstrate it with moving some box across the screen so I'm going to delete that text right there and I'm going to place uh, the rectangle at an x and y value so I'm just going to say ent x equals 100 y equals 100 again this is just menu state example one that we did last time um, so I'm filling a rectangle at x and y uh, it's 100 by 100, let's make it a bit smaller, 50, 50. And what we can do now is, in oops, in our constructor for menu state, we can add mappings to our input manager. So we can say input manager, and remember, input manager is already created in our state class here, and because we extend state, we can use that. We can say input manager dot add mapping, and I'm going to name this first one up, and then you need to give it a key code so you would say key event dot and then vk underscore up and I'm gonna copy and paste this alright so I've just copied and pasted that four times we now have up down left right all with key codes up down left right and in our in in our update method here we can literally say now we can say input manager or no, we need an if statement actually. If input manager dot is pressed dot is pressed, there we go. And then we can say up because that's what we named it here, up. And then we can give that brackets. And then you can copy and paste this four times. And now that we have that, we can simply add mappings. I'm just gonna do really simple. So for up, y minus minus, for down, y plus plus. Um, for left x minus minus and for right x plus plus and now that's all done we can finally run this 
we can see our square. And if I move the left and right arrow keys, all the arrow keys, you can see that we move it. But obviously you can see here that we're painting like a thick line across the screen. And that is a double buffering problem that we're going to fix in the next tutorial. And that is pretty cool, I think, that input manager class. You can use that uh, however you want. Uh, like I said, the re what this input manager class does is it opens up the opportunity to use to handle key presses wherever you want and not just in the key pressed uh, key release thing. So that is basically it for this tutorial guys. I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, go to the forums or uh, ask in the comments. I tend, if you send me a personal message, I won't be able to answer it. Uh, straight away because I usually leave my personal messages to the end of like a week or a couple of weeks and then I answer them all so you're far better off getting a reply if you just head to the forums make an account if you don't already and then post a question and I'm sure you'll get an answer uh, within 24 hours so uh, again thanks for watching guys please subscribe and I will see you next time